we've become a nation obsessed with losing weight overnight instead of staying healthy over time. At RWJ Barnabas Health, our new Center for Weight Loss in Hamilton offers options, the latest in bariatric surgery or physician-directed medical weight loss. Visit rwjbh.org slash weight loss. Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Hamilton and RWJ Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. I'm not sure. Asshole, that's what you is. I am an asshole. I, I I try to be an asshole at least um, seven times a day. But <laughs> welcome, you guys. That's a hell of a way to start a show. Yeah, I'm an asshole. I try to be an asshole several times a day. Anywho, welcome to tonight's show, guys. Um, hey, what's up? I hope you all having a great night. I'm trying to, but, you know, just don't want to let me um, try. But, um. Today is September 20th, 2018. We are ready for this show. Guys, I hope y'all um, get ready to enjoy this topic. It's very interesting, too, because I've been looking at some stuff um, before we just got online. So I'm just like, wow, it's flabbergasted. But we're going to talk about it in the show. But if you're listening right now, you're on blogtalkradio.com forward slash GFT radio show. Clint, you want to say hi? What's going on, good people? It's your boy, Clint. You already know. You feel me? Of course. You know, I'm a co-host. I'm stingy with the wine, so of course you're gonna be stingy with the time. Not interested. I'm sorry. You know what? I was. I'm, I'm still trying to open it, and it's like this cork really don't want to come out. And I'm really feeling some time, like really over here struggling with it, and I'm trying to multitask. But that's, I'm so focused on getting it open that I can't function. <laughs> it's real out here. You don't got a corkscrew. I do, but it's not. Well, you, you, like you get over using a butter knife. I'm about to bite this shit open. I'm like, it's real. It's, I'm, I'm just struggling. It's real. Hold on. We got Willie just coming on the line. Willie, you want to say hi? What up, though? It's your boy, Willie Styles. What's good, people? What's going on, Willie? She over there. She's trying to open her wine bottle with with a butter knife. No, I'm not. Butter I got... knife? No, no. Supposed no, to push it through with like a pen. First of all, screw y'all. <laughs> I just got open. I had to. Nope. I had to bite it and like pull it. It was. It was. It was maneuvers. I just what in the heck is she over there doing? That's well, I had. I a don't know what she doing. I what had a cork. Of... <laughs> Hold on. The wine is from Cream Ridge Winery, and the corkscrew is really, really soft. It's not like the you know the wooden corkscrew. It's not. It's not like that. So it's a softer one. So when I put the corkscrew in, it was like breaking it like all the way across instead of just digging down and pulling it up. So I was struggling to get it out because I was trying to get this wine open like five minutes before the show started. I just got it open. So. Oh, okay. Well, there. We do. We doing this show on healthy habits, healthy eating, and biting on a uh. <laughs> biting on a cook. <laughs> on a cook. Biting on a cook. That's not it's real out here. I checked. I, I did my. I did my research and. That's not <laughs> <laughs> no, let me tell y'all something. No, let me tell y'all something. If y'all had the week that I had this week, which if you was following me on Facebook, Clint, I know you're not on Facebook, but if you knew the week that I had, I deserve this bottle of wine. For those who listen to the show that that list that's on my Facebook, y'all know that this glass of wine is is much needed. As and I also need to prepare for tomorrow, so I won't yell at the curtain board of education. I can't even talk. This is how frustrated I am. <sighs> It's real. It's real. But let me give out let me give y'all a number and Teespring so y'all can buy some merchandise. Go on Teespring dot com forward slash stores or slash GFT radio. Copy all merch, put it on our, our social media page. Let us know that you rocking with GFT radio and the crew. Um our phone number is six five seven three eight three one one five five. You're gonna if you wanna join that topic, just definitely call in. Don't be scared, scared or shy. Hit us up. On Twitter as well at GFT underscore radio to join in on this topic, but um, we we gonna let the oh, fellas. I'm, I'm waiting. Next... We waiting on what? I was about to say I'm waiting on my merch now. I got some merch. Oh, you are. What did you get? I got a hoodie. Uh, I think I got a uh, what up those shirt. Oh yeah, I got one of those. I yeah, think I got every I'm shirt. To, uh... I think I'm. I think I'm getting the mug, the the Commander Cheeto. I need to get that one. I need the all skin folk yeah. ain't skin 
Getting Folk, getting Kim Folk. Oh, I Kim definitely Folk. need that yeah, one. That's, what, <laughs> yeah. that's the one I really need. Yeah, out there. I should have got that one. Yeah, I'm about to say. I know. I know. I'm about to. I'm about to cop some uh, uh, some hoodies and then uh, and, and and a couple of different other things. But I definitely got to get that Commander Cheeto. You know, that's my that's my word. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. That was that's 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 an Aunt Willie favorite line from day one, right? I think that's gonna be my whole my exactly. whole thing. Exactly. The uh, GFT Radio. Hoodies like, with some uh, GFT shirts. That's going to be well, my you know, whole fall and winter. On, yeah, because I can, I can dress down on Friday, so I try to make sure I at least rock. Well, last last week I actually rock, rocked the podcast but the shirt because I haven't um, worn a shirt in a while, so I definitely had to rock them. But, um, yeah, but I always normally have on one of our shirts, so, you know, got to definitely represent. Oh, like that shirt. Where you get it from? Teespring.com, bitch. He's bring that gum. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll be serious. Like you go here, here. Matter of fact, give me your phone. I'll show you where it's at. Go ahead and order. Pro X. That's dope, dope, dope. So who want to jump in first? Whether you want to start it or you want me, or well, I mean, did, did, did y'all go over the premise of the show and what what, what we do were that. thinking when we decided to? Yeah. No, so no. I guess I'll start. I'll start. Huh? No, I said, no, we was focused on the wine. I <laughs> focused on the wine, okay. <laughs> All right, well, we're good people. We, we uh, as you can see from our topics, uh, title and summary, we are talking about are we eating death? Is our if is the health food that we think is healthy really good for us? So uh, basically, uh, Clinton and I were talking about, I think we were just talking about food in general, talking about health and things like that, and we kind of hit on this topic and this, uh, uh, you know, this, this 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 myth of health that we sometimes fall into with a lot of different types of foods and and, and marketing campaigns. Uh, uh, that's I definitely want to touch on that today, the marketing campaigns. But basically, you know, we were talking about that. Um, a lot of foods are put, pushed to us, you know, uh, as being either healthy or not, you know, we have a lot of different stuff that that's presented to us here, especially in the U.S. Um, I don't know about other countries since I'm not there, but I know that you know, food is a huge part of life here in in, in America. And um, but the thing is, is that we always have these misconceptions of what health is and what healthy food is, and um, be it a marketing campaign or be it something that we're told uh, by the, the status quo or by, or by them, quote unquote them, um, you know, we, we make assumptions or we, or we live our lives in this, in this haze of, of misunderstanding. So we just kind of want to touch on a lot of those myths, touch on a lot of those items that, you know, people think that are healthy and not, or things that people say, you know, that you should be doing or that you shouldn't be doing and, and, you know, kind of just chop it up on that. So, uh, definitely want everybody to chime in if you got, you know, some some uh, opinions on this, and, and or you got something to say about it. Definitely hit us up six five seven three eight three one one five five or tweet tweet us at gft underscore radio. I'm on the tweets right now. You know me, always in these tweets. So yeah, I need to get a better Twitter. Uh, Clint, life. you want to Clint? I think Clint really has probably the most. Well, Clint always got like. And from when Clint gets, gets gets his mind put on something, he he know about it. He know about it. You know me, I had to do some research. I don't got that kind of memory me to remember all this stuff. But um, <laughs> but I think Clint was making a good point about um just the fact that we have a lot of foods that we claim are healthy, things that are in our grocery stores right now that we go to and we feed our children, and you know it, it's just a misconception. You know, Clint, you want to touch on that a little bit. Of course, of course. Uh, it, with me, I'm just start about. I'm a uh, beginner. How I how I really started focusing in on what's healthy and what's what I found out what's not healthy. Uh, you know, I always talk about how you know I was dealing with my health issues. So one of the things my doctors told me was, "Well, Clint, you gotta change your diet." <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I didn't have a good diet. You know, I ate my fruits, my vegetables, but I ate a lot of junk food, a lot of greasy food, ate late. So one of the things the doctors wanted me to do was, all right, Clint, you got to correct your diet, eat more healthy, uh, and things like that. So I'm like, cool. So in my mind, it's like, it's real simple. 
cut out on all the little junk food, the candy, the, the cakes, uh, drink more water, uh, you know, vegetables, fruits. This, this, that. So, so you, you think, and, and I'm thinking to myself, all right, this is this should be healthy. I mean, this is this is healthy eating. And when you find down, you go to the supermarket, and then you realize, first of all, every supermarket isn't created equal. Mm-mm. All produce and all stores aren't created equal. Mm-hmm. So you you know you'll buy apples from one grocery store, and then you'll buy the same type of apples from another grocery store, and the taste is completely different, and things like that. So now you got to ask yourself, well, where they get they, where is they getting their food from, and how are they preserving their food? That's a big yeah. thing too. What are they using to preserve their food? And, and then when you look and you like, they put they spraying what on this food on these apples? They spraying what on these fruit? I mean, on these uh vegetables? Like this stuff is more harmful. Than some of the other stuff than the junk food, you know what I mean? The pesticides mm-hmm. they got spray on it, all types of uh, crazy things. So I'm like, That's well, bad. well, damn. <clears throat> so I'm like, well, damn. Uh, so now when I buy this, I got to check out. I got to look at everything. Now I got to study the food. I got to study on how I clean my food before I before I consume it. You know, it, it, it's so much more that go into it now. And you realize that all vegetables, you feel me, sometimes the vegetables look good and they're really not good. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like, they like they they old. Some of them not even, they hybrids. Then, then you'll realize, like, your fruit. If if a fruit that comes from seeds don't have, like, grapes, seedless grapes, you'll realize that's not even healthy. It's a hybrid. Mm-hmm. Like, it really doesn't contain the nutrients that you really need. So we, a lot of people around here eating seedless grapes, seedless watermelon. Like, that's not even real food. It's like eating clone stuff. You know, and then you, say you want to buy the chicken. You want to buy yourself some chicken and, and bake you some chicken instead of frying it or whatever. Then you realize these chickens got hormones in them. Mm-hmm. They clone chicken. You know what I mean? So now it's like, come on, man. You walking through the grocery store, you looking at it, you second guessing everything you pick out because you're like, is this even healthy for me? Right. What right. did they put in it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How was this? How was this uh, created? You know, that's why if you pay attention to a lot of the packages now, packages now of food, <coughs> they be like, no hormones, no GMOs, uh, gluten free, all this extra yeah. stuff. And then, and then when you look at it, you realize, man, this shit don't even mean nothing. What else you doing to it? How how did you you know what I mean? How was the how was the chicken fed? What were they fed? You know what I mean? Like how were they keep the upkeep? There's so many videos you look at and for those who eat pork or any or any type of uh red meat as well, you look at how they kill the slaughter them animals. Some of them. It's like and then where they keep them? How, they be having cancer. You feel me? A lot of meat that just cut around the cancer. It's it's wild. It's wild. They trying to make people go full blown vegetarian, (laughs) right? But no, just 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 the part about um, the the cancerous meat and the and the defective meat um, that that right there is so real. You know, I I was watching a documentary about that. Uh, Of course, I can't remember the name, but I'm sure some of y'all have seen it out there. Uh, basically, it was talking about you know the slaughter of animals, talking about the the way um, some of these farms and these production farms are, are ran, and they were showing how you know I mean one it was it, man I wish I could remember the name of it but um, a lot of people have seen it though it basically it's it's the one that went around on Facebook a few years ago and it was uh, pretty much pushing about the the fact of how people was, you know, abusing the animals during the farming part. But they also kind of touched a little bit about the, you know, the the, the way that they package the meat and that kind of thing, how they, you know, not package it, but you know what I mean, how they do those cuts and and, and some of the things they do 
to the meat, you know, between the hormones and the other things that they, they pump full of the, the, into the animals, and then it creates this, you know, overproduced meat, especially the chicken and the beef, that kind of thing, but also can create these ulcers and cancers that are, that are coming, that are on the meat that they're just cutting off. You know, and then they just sell it as as good meat. Um, you know, the the inspections that they do is so far a few between. You know, you really not you you really can't be sure, one hundred percent sure of what's being produced and what's being you know hidden in, in the production yeah. of the food. Yeah, that's why you see all that chicken so, that you when you if you cook chicken a lot, you'll see that what's that that kind of gooey film. That's over the chicken mm-hmm. when it's got all that stuff. And that's why I don't understand why people don't prop- – I mean, I know it might be not be healthy, but if you're going to eat it, a lot of people – well, I've, I've recently read that a lot of people don't clean meat properly. They just take it out of the package yeah. and – Because a lot, do a lot of people don't know. A lot, yeah, a lot of people yeah. don't even know how to clean their meat properly. You know, that's like, – like Clint was just saying a second ago, you know, he had to study up on how he should be properly washing his – uh, fruit and produce. You know, you gotta yeah. you gotta take a class on this stuff. You know, basically <laughs> to be able to survive out here. Um, I think a lot of the, uh, the the misconceptions of you know you buy stuff from the grocery store and it's in the fresh meat department or you know you're buying stuff from the fresh produce department. You know, people just have this sense of uh, of safety in in trusting these grocery markets, right? You know, not realizing that you know you, you spend them you know, 10 or 20 or 30 cents less for one type, for one uh, pack, uh, uh, producer's meat versus another, you know, yeah, part of it is, is maybe the advertising that you're not paying for, but the other part of it is, is the way that they produce the meat, you know. You, you hear more exactly. more times out or not is that, you know, these these sub-grade farms and, and, and these off-brand uh, uh, meats that are yeah, being look at that sold meat. in the stores, you know, at half price, you know, you got to be careful of that stuff because those are the same ones beating the crap out of their chickens, you know, cutting mm-hmm. away cancers, serving you up mad cow. They don't care, you know. Yeah, um, I remember I and, got and, this and, bag and, of chicken that, that just didn't look like I had, um, you know, most of us buy, well, I buy a lot of food at one time. So I put it in the freezer. One time I actually unthawed this, this chicken, and just looking at it after I took it out of the package, I'm like, yeah, no. I threw the whole thing away. Like, I don't. That don't look safe. Like I, I've never seen chicken like that, and I was like, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> and it's Fact. just because you, like you, you, you have, to, you have to look at your, your meat. You can't, you can't just um, like, and it was hard times, and I, I threw that shit right the hell away, like, cause I was not about to feed that. Cause you know you have yeah, to be, you I have did. to be mindful of what you're cooking. This, this is that's one of the uh, I'm glad Woody brought this, mentioned that about the uh, getting your food. This is one of the reasons why we brought up this topic because, you know, for that simple fact, a lot of people don't know where to, we're too trusting. That's what he was, that's what Willie meant. We trust yeah. how our right, exactly that yep. they're going to give us good food. You feel me? So we don't even t- take the time. That's why suddenly you said you just finding out that a lot of people don't know how to clean their meat or don't even clean their meat. They just pop that package open and just start seasoning it. You feel me? Hmm. And you know me growing up watching my great grandma, how she washed clean the hell out of that chicken. And it, yes. Yeah, like she'll wash that chicken, and you know how like sometimes it had a little hairs on it or yeah, whatever. Yeah, cut it off. Yeah. So she'll cut it off or she'll burn it off. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she was she was real meticulous about how she cooked her chicken, the quality of her chicken, and how she cleaned it. So I learned yeah. that as a, I just learned that from seeing it. I never knew. Like you said, I never knew a lot of people didn't do I thought that everybody did. Because, yeah. Yeah, but don't. Because a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, you would think. Yeah. I was, yeah, a lot of people were so trusting. I was watching this. Uh, They were showing this clip on IG of this uh morning show. It's one of these nationally televised morning shows. And they had one of these prominent cooks on there, a black cook. And they took it out, and they were showing how they watched the meat. You know, she was like, all right. And, and like, the host of the show, it was a man and a woman. Like, they were so shocked. Like, you wash your meat with water? It was a lady. She was so shocked. And she was like, I've never done that. Wow. Well, I've never, never done eat at her house. And, and, and it, but the audience, it was so many people in the audience were the same way. 
You feel me? Like they paying the audience. Some audience members was looking like, wow, like you don't know that. Other uh, audience members were in shock just as well. Like, wow, I never, I never walked, ran water over my meat or did any type of thing. I just popped that package over and start seasoning it and start cooking. No. That's crazy. You feel me? That's lot- crazy. Yeah. Exactly. That's and why I said that, 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 that makes you not want to eat at people's house. Like, how do you cook? I don't know. Mm-mm. I know, well, you know, that's why. This, this, this is my thing is when you open that package and you, like you said, Sonny, especially with chicken, you see that film all over it. Like, who who wants to eat that? And then <laughs> with beef, usually, yeah. yeah, and then usually with beef, it's all got the blood still all over it. So it's like, bro, if yeah. nothing else, rinse the blood off. Like, come on, people. Okay? <laughs> Exactly, but you know. Yeah, I rinse every meat that and, I cook. I rinse it off. I don't care if it's like, mm mm. Just yeah, because like, <clears throat> I don't, I don't even just, tr- I don't even trust the packaging. Yeah. Like, forget how they, before they put it in the package, you don't know how well it was preserved or whatever. But when you put that plastic over it, you put that little foam thing at the bottom. Like I don't like this. that little uh piece that little small little piece when it's frozen underneath it that when you lift mm-hmm. the meat up it be sticking to the bottom of the meat like yeah you can, like that's material right. that you gotta that's, wash that's, 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 that's a bunch of bacteria all that blood yeah, wash right. that off you feel me Just but, collecting. you know a lot of us a lot of us don't know that and even when it comes to you know like with, with the fruit with my daughter like say I have an apple or, or plums in the refrigerator mm-hmm. now like she'll sometimes she'll grab it and she'll go to buy it. Like hold on, you know what I mean? Go over and that off thoroughly. You know. Yeah, you I mean? see go my son that, off. Like, that day he was eating all the grapes. I was like, Jingle, this. He ain't care yeah, nothing he was about just his. Grabbing them out the back. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to that. save them. And that's how we. And that's the things that we have to teach our children young. You know what I mean? Because, you know, to get them in the habit. I want to get my daughter into the habit of, you know what I mean? Studying her food and making sure it's, it's clean before she eat, you know, yeah. because, you know, what we eat are, is killing us. You know, this is what we eat is the reason for a lot of the diseases we had. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and I forgot to mention earlier, you know what I mean? One of the, when I was talking about foods, tilapia, because I did, well, I forgot to mention fish. A lot of people love tilapia. You feel me? And when you do research, like tilapia ain't even a real fish. Like how they and it, how they grow it in the mm. little fish farms, oh, like yeah. it's cloned farm, fish. Yeah, on fish farms. Yeah. Yeah, like, like it's hybrid. not even real. So, <laughs> like yep, the hybrid exactly. Don't got no bones, no nothing. You know and, what it, mean? and then it's just first a of all, I don't. I mean, I've had it, but I don't necessarily like it because you can't even season it because it's over. It, it's whatever they do. It just not it, like you can't. You can over season it. It could not, not taste like nothing, and it's just not good. I'll take yeah. white and I mean, I used, I used to eat it. Yeah, I used to eat it. I used to eat it a lot back in the day because it was like you know, it was it was a it was a cheap white fish. You know, we didn't know nothing mm-hmm. about it, and we you know once again trusting. And uh, but I, I, shoot, my my white my my tilapia was good. I I knew how to season it. So, <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's but you know, good. once you start learning, but like, but, but once you started, you know, once we started learning what what was really going on with that, you know, you, we had to switch. You know, it's like you know, I I started buying swai instead. I started doing, uh, like you said, orange roughy stuff like that because that stuff. What what I was what I was assuming was inexpensive food. Was one, you know, like you said, it was killing us. It had mercury in it. It's got uh, the mm-hmm. way they farm it. It's they they they're farmed um, uh, in these channels, and then inside the channels, they're feeding them basically like manure. It's like they're feeding them like waste in order to just keep the fish going. And then you know they mass, you know, kill the fish and then sh- packages ship it out. So that's why it's so cheap. And it's, most of it, I think, is coming from China anyway. So. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, they were saying, you know, they were, you know, they, basically what I what I ended up learning is that there's other fish that that has an equal uh, expense or or a similar expense, you know, maybe a little bit more, but not much, but is much, you know, a, a much better either a much better fish or just much safer in, in general. You yeah. Know? So 
um, you know, it was definitely something that I had to switch over because, you know, like you said, you got to be concerned about your kids. You got to be concerned about your own health. Yeah. And you got to be, you know, uh, conscious of what you're putting into you, especially when you don't realize that, like you said, it's just some kind of fish they just made up. It's like, bro, that's crazy to me. But, um, you know, because I, 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 you know, I just assumed it was maybe it was just from a different place that I just didn't know, you know, because, I mean, we got our, <laughs> we got our type, certain types of fish here in Michigan you know, that y'all don't get in everywhere else, you know. I mean, trout here is exactly. a huge thing, you know, but it, 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 oh, and carp, you know. I don't know if y'all even get carp in like... Yeah, we got, uh, we got, we, uh, we, we got trout and carp. Yeah. We do. We okay, do. but yeah, it's just, you know, uh, I just made some assumptions, but, you know, when you find out that that stuff is just some kind of hybrid or some kind of fish that they, that they you know, been farming and it's not really, you know, prevalent in the wild like it eat, like, like the way it's being produced, it's like that's scary, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, one of the other things I, I thought about too with, with, with this whole situation is, um, you know, in a similar fashion, is the is the vegetables. You know, we mm-hmm. yeah. uh, kind of like how you were saying earlier, Clint. You know, we just make that assumption that you know I'm gonna eat some vegetables. Vegetables are good for us. You know, we go to the store, we buy it. You know, and a lot of people they've been hearing about it lately. It's been pushed a lot more. You know, a lot more education about it. I won't. I won't even call it education. You know, it's just been anti-marketing campaigns against it. It's just the GMOs. You know, we got to be conscious mm-hmm. of that. You know, um, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, bag, no, I won't call it manufacturing, but farms and a lot of different uh, companies are pushing the organic food, uh, which really is important. It's important to eat organic. Everything that's organic is not get organic. Your food. That's yeah. I was just gonna touch on that. Is that you know we gotta be, but we also have to be careful of of just you know a marketing claim. You know, just somebody saying, oh yeah, this is organic. You know, and it may, may or may not be, but you know you gotta you still gotta do your due diligence to to try your best to not you know eat every type of food that's just you know sold at the market because a lot of it does have you know GMOs in it. Um, you know, there's cross pollination that happens, and 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 that's you know kind of a, a sad fact of life. You know, things are going to mm-hmm. happen, you know, especially because it's so much more prevalent. But the thing is, is that I think if we keep pushing as a community, as a people, uh, I mean, not just black people, everybody, you know, black people, white people, everybody needs to push this, is that we want healthy, real food, you know, not not genetically modified, not, you know, food that's that's being, you know, doused and sprayed and pesticides to death. You know, there's there's better and easier ways for them to make that stuff without it having to be in doused and pesticides. You know, there's ways to, to farm and to protect the food. You know, yeah, it makes it a little bit more uh, costly, but I think if everybody's mm-hmm. buying it and everybody's doing it, then it, the price doesn't have to be so costly. You know, and it doesn't yeah. have to be, mm-hmm. you know, uh, unreachable. You know, so I yeah, think that's the biggest people, thing. You know, this is why people, kids are growing the way they're growing. The food is so, like, everything, like, like they they have – changed a lot of the food from back when we were growing up. They changed a lot of the food um, with different, with all different types of things. Like now you got kids lactose intolerant that, 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 that wasn't a thing back in the day, but now it is like just so many things that people can't tolerate because they, they have, they have changed the, the way these things are made so much that are some, some, some people's bodies can't tolerate this. That's why they coming out with almond milk, like all this random milk that are not real milk. It's just, it's just crazy. Like it's so much, I, and this is why the kids, the was, kids uh, growing up to be looking like they looking now. I was, uh, it was just, you know, I was working. I was talking to some young lady, and you know, she was in my car, and she was eating a hamburger, right? Mm-hmm. And we were listening to the radio, and he was talking about, you feel me? I'm, I'm go, drawing a blank on the specific food they were referring to and she was like she was saying it to herself she was like I can't eat that she was like I don't see how people eat that and I'm looking at her eat this hamburger I'm like do you know what you what you're eating is is, is worse like than than what they're talking about and like she just couldn't process. I'm like, do you understand where you get your meat from, or how that meat is made? How that hamburger patty was made? What it consists of? You know, mm-hmm. and her, and her, and her, her response was, <laughs> yeah. 
And her response was, well, I don't really think about it. It's already made for me when I got it. And, like, I feel like that's the biggest problem. And yeah. most of us, you know, if you take these supermarkets away and all that, these, uh, you know, these farmer's markets, you take those away, most people don't even know how to feed themselves. Most people don't know how to uh, grow, grow, grow their food, vegetables, none of us. Like, we're so dependent on other people for our food that, you know, they've been shoving shoving us junk food, these fast food places been shoving junk food down our throats for so many decades now that we it just become normal. And that's why the society, American society, we so, we so obese, one of the most obese mm-hmm. nations in the world because because of the way we eat. You know, we want all want want everything to be microwave, everything to be quick. No, I hate you know? I hate microwave and, like I hate microwave with passion. What, I hate microwave food too. I hate microwave and old food. But, but to a point to what Willie <laughs> was making earlier about the food, uh, uh like a lot of people don't know, look up oranges. Right? And you'll find out the original oranges like they're green. You feel me? Like they not, they're not really orange. That's dye. Like wow. the outer peelings is, is green. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be green. You know, even look up how what they did with the watermelon. How watermelon originally looked to, to how it looks now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Like it's like wow. You did you like you never think to do the research. Like I. Didn't, Growing up eating watermelon, or you know, I never thought about just looking up. Well, even though my grandma had a garden, I used to help her mm-hmm. uh, work the garden. That's why I want to have my own garden. I want to start growing my own food. That's one thing I really want to do and learn, be, be proficient at. But, you know, you don't really think about looking this stuff up. You know what I mean? My daughter asked me like that, you know, eating the apple and the seeds in the apple, that I want to grow an apple tree. I really had to think, like, damn, yeah. well, how you really go to apples? How you really go to apple tree? You can't just plant the seed. You think it'll be that yeah. simple, right? Just plant the seed. Like, no, I'll, I'll go looking at it, and they tell you, you got to put it in a, the seeds and a little plastic thing and put it in the fridge away to wait for it to, because it's, they've been so cross-pollinated that you just can't do it. Like, <laughs> you, can't, just, you just can't guard them. <laughs> yeah, you like throwing seeds in the ground. You know, wow. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. But, you know, I, I I want to touch on some more stuff like that, you know, basically put some facts out there, too, about about things that we make assumptions on that are healthy. Um, I was looking at this this website, and it broke down, like, 10 or 15 foods. I think it was 10 foods that people assume either are healthy or don't realize are, are unhealthy for them. And, uh, you know, some people are going to know about this stuff. A lot of people don't. Um one of the things that uh, I think I, I even kind of fo- I, I even found not not surprising, but it was just you know I just couldn't believe that you know we have been pushed this information so much that you know we, we don't question it right, and that was about like the, the um, white fl- like flour you know so breads things like that cakes things like that that you know you think when you make it stuff from home you know home homemade. You know what do you usually do? You go make make it with the the ingredients that you have at the house, right? You don't usually go to you know to the ground and, and, and grow the and grow the grains and everything, and then you know refine it yourself to create uh, homemade bread. You you make it with you know with, with with the flour you buy from the store. And you know when I first learned about this a long time ago, um, it's probably it's probably been about ten years I had first learned about this. But you know it wasn't very popular back then. It's been more popular recently to learn about these kind of things. Um, but you know the one thing it was talking about was how you know white flour, you know even though it's a whole grain or made from whole grain, to make it white they refine it and they and they strip away most of the. Um, Nutrient. Uh, the fiber that's in the whole grain, the nutrients and everything, and so mm-hmm. the um, 
the result is, is something that's going to end up making you uh, weight, you know, gain weight. It, it, it promotes obesity and diabetes. Um, the gluten in it is inflammatory, so uh, you know, and that's linked to in, in to, to health risks like uh, inflammation of the, of your you know of your body and uh, digestive issues, things like that. Um, another thing that was that was uh, and I know this is always shocking to people, is like reduced fat dairy. A lot of people always yeah. push like, you know, oh, get the low fat, you know, get the low fat, you know, milk or get the low fat yogurt or get the no fat this, that, and the other that's dairy, right? You know, and for one, um, I, I can't remember what, what, what video I was watching about this, was, you know, is that we, should, we just shouldn't be eating dairy anyway, you know. Nope. Milk is from cow, milk from cows is for cows. It's not for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but but when it but when it comes to if you are going to eat it, you know, eating the reduced fat version is really not good for you. It, you know, and I actually only just really realized this in the last couple of years is that yeah. most reduced fat products are high in sugar, super high in sugar. Yeah. So you talking mm-hmm. you avoiding fat, trying not to get fat, but you're gonna pump yourself full of sugar and end up, end up with diabetes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you end up with you know with, what's with funny though. Trouble. You know what's funny though. One of my friends. And you, you know how when you know, after you have babies um, after one and they start drinking whole milk, they're what well, they normally drink whole milk. Well, she decided that her son was going to be healthy and she gave him two percent milk. It ended up messing with his bone density. Like his his something was yes. wrong where he wasn't growing properly. But she was like, oh no, he don't eat he don't eat whole, he don't drink whole milk. He only eat two only drink two percent. And lo and behold, she found out that it was harming him more than it was helping him. Exactly. That's, that's, that's one of the biggest things pediatricians tell you: do not feed your babies and your and your toddlers um, uh, reduced fat anything. They need mm-hmm. that fat, and they need calcium, yeah. and they need it's a, it's so many things that you you I mean you cannot put children on a diet. You just can't. You know I mean when they yeah. get older and 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 they're way overweight, you gotta you have to combat that with exercise with health healthy eating. You can't you can't put them mm-hmm. on diets. So put it, you know, and giving a kid, you know, reduced fat milk, you know, giving them your no fat this, no fat that. You know, that's totally kind of reductive to their growth and their in their development. Yeah, and you know what's funny and too. Um, oh yeah, okay. sugar. Yeah, sugar. Yeah. No, right. I was going to yeah, say. I'm gonna get on sugar in a sec. Like everything, like everybody's body is different with with how what they need to eat to maintain their their body. So. I know a lot of people focus on healthy stuff or alleged healthy stuff, and it's not it's not healthy for them. Because when I was going through, I remember I don't know if y'all remember a couple of, uh, a couple of months back when I was going through the um, when, I, when I when I was tired and I, I could I was sleeping all the time and I, I didn't have energy and stuff like that. My doctor actually put me on a vitamin B pill, gave me iron pills, and told me that basically my my um, muscle and I believe he said protein was low. So I had to eat red meat. I had to actually eat steak, like a lot of more steak and a lot more beef because my, my whatever it was was causing my body to not get the energy. So like for, for most people when they when they're told that they can't eat certain red meat, I had to take it take in more because I wasn't eating enough. So you have to be like when you when you want to be healthy eating, you have to really talk to your doctor to see what works best for you because you might need to eat certain things that most people can't eat because you need it for whatever different reasons. Or if you don't want to eat yeah. certain things, you have to find a substitute that's going to help you because you you can't right. get to the point where because yeah, like I'm the type of person. That's yeah, because right I'm the type of person where I don't eat a lot of red meat. I um I, I do eat a lot of um stuff with iron because I know my iron is low. But I'm always baking stuff. I'm always eating stuff. And then I also find that broccoli is not healthy. Good. Yeah, all. broccoli not good for it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I was Fair telling enough. him what, what I was eating, and he had me sit down with a nutritionist to plan out that. So now I, now I have to be mindful, like, once a week, I have, if I haven't eaten any red meat, I have to. Because that's going to make my energy go down low, and that's why I'm sleeping all the time, and I can't function because, like, once I, once I get from work, I'm just completely exhausted because I don't have energy to do anything else. So you have to be mindful, Man, like, when I, I, you do these diets to kind of, Talk to your doctor to make sure to find out what's healthy for you. 
Yeah, I I know you got something to say, Clint. I just want just wanted to interject one thing though. You know, I think I think not only talking to your doctor, but do your research. You know, if you know your body has issues, do research about it. Find. I I personally feel like you should find alternative means of of, of finding the best way to to, to fix your body. Um, because I'm not I'm, I just can't promote red meat at all. Um, I, I recently I gave up beef much. myself just because I just. I just, I just, I just don't believe that we should be putting that in our bodies, because um, there's other ways to get good, high, you know, not high, but good, mm-hmm. good amounts of of iron. There's other ways to get good amounts of protein. There's protein in a lot of stuff. It's not just in red yeah. meat. So you got, you, you got, you got alternatives, but you have to do research. Like, like you basically what you're saying, Sonny, you, 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 you can't, you can't say I'm going to do what everybody else is doing just because that's the healthy way of doing things. You have to do what's healthy for you. And, and I, yeah. I, 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 I definitely agree with that, but I definitely feel like you have to do research on what's going to be good Absolutely. for your body, but also what's good all, all the way around. You know what I mean? Because yeah. There's, there's That's why so I had much, the, um, you know, the, 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 the vitamins is substituted too, because I can't, like, exactly. I just don't yeah. eat, I don't eat beef like that. Like, I mean, once in the blue, but like, I can't see myself like, hey, I want to, like, I'm not a steak eater. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I just, I just know my doctor, not my doctor, but I know I, I, uh, like my kid's doctor. He promotes certain things, and then I'll be like, you know what, I don't really believe in that. And I go ask another doctor. I like to get my second opinions. I go ask my doctor, and he'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, because my doctor's really into like looking at alternative ways, because like he's not like a pill pusher. He don't, he yeah. don't get off into that, uh, you know, the notion of everything has to be a. Yeah, so I mean that. Yeah, that's another reason I'm like, you know, I really want to change my kid's doctor anyway. He's good on a lot of things, but it's certain things I just be like, I be butting heads with him. But um, uh, but basically, I think that you know, I think we have to just do the do uh, what's best for us. You know what I mean? And and let's do our own research too. You know, not to say that you you shouldn't believe everything a doctor says. I mean, just just you know, when your doctor tells you you got cancer, usually you, usually you do. You know. But the, <laughs> his 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 means and methods of fixing it though may not be the only means and methods. That's why you still got to go yeah. get a second opinion, Regard, regardless of what your one doctor say. Sometimes you got to go talk to another one because quiet as a kept. Medicine is not a, is not a science. It's completely an art. It's completely them fig, trying to figure it out. They they that's why they yeah. call it a practice because they're always practicing on you. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, and then, well, actually, go ahead, Clint. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm gonna cut you off, and I'm going off on the rant. Go ahead, man. <laughs> no, no, y'all good, y'all good. I was just gonna say, I was gonna go back to the sugar. You know what I mean? Because oh, we yeah. just you touched on it, but when you really get sh- sugar is like sugar is a drug, people. You know I mean, sugar shouldn't be. Uh, you really shouldn't be eating sugar because when you mention flour, you know what I mean, sugar as well. Like we shouldn't be eating sugar at all. I know we all do, you know. Even know. speaking of color, drinking tea, sugar ain't white either. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's not exactly, exactly, and and it's really it's it's <laughs> so we should like cornmeal ain't white either. Just just so y'all know, if, you know what I mean. So we really really shouldn't be eating it. And I noticed to get back on like diets, like I said, I you had to study, you know, things that have made me feel better going through what I'm going through and like things I really never ate before. Like for instance, talk about onions. Like I hate onions. Only time I only time I usually could eat onion it was, was ironically on like a cheese steak or something like that. Chopped. So it's like, you know, that's not that's not even really good for me. But the cheese steak itself now was never really healthy for for me, for anybody really all the grease. But that's the only time I can stomach onions. So when I'm looking up things that help me feel better, one of the things that came up was onions. You know, and they said onions are healthy for you, uh, even if you whether you cook it or raw. But it's better raw because it has the higher, it have a higher uh, nutrient intake for you. So now lately, I've been like my mom always ate raw, and I couldn't understand how she do it. You know, if she go somewhere and she get all of us hoagies or something, and then the onions come up, like, man, you know, I like onions. You like, take them off, give them to her, and she'll eat the onions. Like, I can never eat raw onions now over the past few months. I've been 
eating onions. You feel me? Raw onions. Like, it, it, it's, it's nasty. And, and, and I was following some guy. I don't know if you, people in the, in the uh, workout community and in the, in the, in the gym community, <clears throat> the weight, they heard of this guy named C.T. Fletcher. He like he's from Cali. He uh work out real older dude. He was once Mister uh set record for lifting weights or whatever. Very popular, whatever. So mm-hmm. he was recently he was going through some health issues with his heart, and he was talking about how he had to change his diet. And he was like, most of the shit he eat now is is is. What he was used to say would be nasty. That's how he would categorize it. Horrible. Horrible. But then he started to, but he said something that was so eye opening to me was, Man, I'm not trying to eat for the shit to taste good, I'm trying to eat to live. See, we got so we get so caught up right. yeah. on we wanting to eat what tastes good and flavor that we forgot we really just supposed to be eating to live. You feel but me? you know this what's funny though? Crazy. And we don't you really know think funny? like that. You know what's funny? Like I, I was watching this movie and it's not a factual movie. But um I don't know if you remember that movie Noah where um I can't think of his name, the actor that played in um I forget that the, the, the I forget it was like a warrior movie. I can't think of the name of it right now. But it was a it was a Bible movie and it was about the beginning of the times and how it was, and like you see the difference where he grew up on plants and like the earth, like you know the trees, the berries, like basically a vegan diet, and the, the people that were unruly and out of out of like were weren't eating what they were supposed to eat until so they were eating like meat. They were eating meat, so it had me thinking like, are we supposed to be vegan? And we just started eating meat, and that's why we're all messed up and having these problems, these different health problems that were happening because we're not eating what we were so we were supposed to be eating. Like that's yeah, that's, 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 that's I mean that's that's that's, that's really true. I mean that's that's so yeah. much stuff that we shouldn't be eating just for the simple fact that like Clint said, it's either for for for, for taste or prestige or mm-hmm. uh, people experimenting and then they kept you know recreating stuff and redeveloping stuff and creating hybrids of things. There's, I mean there's so much food that we have created. You know what I mean? And it's it's not it's not technically real food, right? You know, when they, when people talk about real food, eat eat real food to live, they're talking about things that come from the earth. They're things they're talking about. I mean, even if it's animals, but it's things that really really came from the earth, not yeah. all this refined and processed and and, oh, and man made problem. junk. You know, so I think that a lot of times people forget that. Like you said, not only that we're not eating for things. Cause I, I just had that conversation with my mom. I had a, uh, I made a smoothie, um, and, and my smoothie is normally like uh, spinach. Um, what I do? Spinach, banana, and then I might have a couple other fruits. I usually use like this tropical fruit blend, so it's got like mangoes and pineapple stuff like that in it. Uh, but I got this one recently that that has like uh, ginger in it as well. So I made this thing, this smoothie. And then I pour uh, coconut water in it. So mm-hmm. I made this 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 smoothie, and she looked at it. She was like, "That looks real nasty." She's like, "How does it taste?" And I was like, "It actually don't taste bad." I was like, "But I'm eating. It. I'm drinking this to be healthy. I'm, I'm not drinking it to because because of how it looks or how it tastes." And I, I literally just had that conversation with her. You know, because I was like, "The alternative is I turn up a glass of orange juice, right? Orange juice." And the problem with orange juice. Especially most store bought orange juice, no matter if it's a home style or fresh squeeze, because most of it ain't fresh squeeze, uh, is that most of it is full of sugar, extra high high fructose corn syrup. A lot of it's filled mm-hmm. with uh, uh, extra new extra uh, not nutrients, extra uh, uh, ingredients to for to help the coloring. Um, especially, I mean. All, like the juice from oranges is not this high neon orange that we get out of these cartons. <laughs> that's just that's just ridiculous. People should know better that that's not real. You know that's that's from you know you know some kind of man-made dye to enhance the color. Uh, the added ingredients uh, for the uh, for the uh, uh, what they call it to make it preserved. 
uh, as well mm-hmm. as the fact that most of those juices are heat pasteurized. So that strips away the nutrients of the juice, so uh, of the fruit, you know, that, that you're getting the, the juice squeezed from. So, I mean, I think the only thing that you really can get that's, that's close to being um, that's close. It's still not. It's still not good, or still not 100%. You know, perfect is cranberry juice and apple juice. Uh, and but those have I hate to be. Cranberry juice. Uh, those have to be. Those have to be raw and unpasteurized. If you don't, if you don't drink unpasteurized juice, then you are drinking something man-made what? because all of it's just it's just sugar water at that point. That's flavored exactly. to taste like the juice that you think you you drinking. If you look at most juice, most juice is. Is mostly water, I think, with the exception of um, the apple juices. So most of them, no, I take that back. I think most of the apple juices are, are, are mostly water too. But most of them are, are mostly water. I think cranberry juice is one of those ones that most people just make the assumption like, oh, you know, this is this is pure just because it's so strong. Like, no, most cranberry juice is like ten percent. <laughs> so it's like you you Man. you're not getting just juice anyway. So you know, we have and to be conscious of, of that. Like when you when you when you in the store and you go in mm-hmm. and look at the bottles of these juices, look at them. It'll tell you ten percent juice. Yeah, thirty exactly. percent exactly. juice. Exactly. And you'd be like, well, then what the fuck is the other ninety seventy percent? That, that's the same thing about alcohol because the ninety percent right. it's like what two percent alcohol and the rest of it or twelve percent <laughs> alcohol and the rest of it, whatever the hell. So, it's, like, it's, all it's all water. Everything's all water. Yeah. It's all water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I was shocked about gluten free not being healthy? I just assumed people like, oh, no, I'm gluten free. I'm like, oh, okay, that's crazy. Maybe it don't taste like nothing. I don't know how you like that. And it's not healthy. It's just yeah. unflavored. Yeah, so let's, so, so, yeah so, let's, let's, so let's switch this over to the marketing. This is, that's, this is, that's the number one. That's my number one. Uh, item that that I hate because I hear people talk about I'm gluten free I'm being gluten free gluten free this gluten free that I want I want gluten free bread blah 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 my thing is what you don't realize is is that's just a marketing device it's all marketing you know gluten as a substance is not good for you that's true it's it's if if but you have to you have to have a lot of gluten <laughs> if, unless you have um, uh, I think it's called celiac disease. Unless you have that disease, for most people, you don't, you can't consume enough gluten to have an effect for, for it to have an effect on you. It's it it does promote inflammation, but you gotta have a lot. You know, people people get this this all in their head like, oh my God, we're gonna die from gluten. And it's like, okay, yeah, if you have celiac disease, which I think it's like 0.06 percent of the U.S. population either has it or has has. Uh, or can be affected by it. That's mm-hmm. a very small number of people for everybody to be sitting out here acting like they can't eat gluten. It's, it's not as healthy as it, as it claims to be. And just because you're eating something gluten-free doesn't mean it's low in fat. It doesn't mean it's low in sugar. It doesn't mean that it that it doesn't have high fr- fructose corn syrup in it. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have uh, uh, nitrites in it. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have um, uh, trans fats in it. It, it can have all that other stuff and still be gluten free. It doesn't make it healthy just because it's gluten free. It doesn't make it good good for you just because it's gluten free. It just doesn't have gluten in it. That's the only thing it means. Oh wow! People got I'm just that reading. I'm just reading about it. So if you don't have that disease and you're just deciding to be gluten free, you could, it could possibly lead you to different studies that you can have IBS. And if anybody know about IBS, oh, yeah. you don't want I forgot to. about that. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, people, all you people out here are talking about you want to be gluten free. There's health, there's health risks you're taking by doing by, by being gluten free. IBS, that means you you have, you have to be at the back, you have to be near bathroom at all times. Ain't no beach trip for you unless you right next to the bathroom, bro. Save yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's there's there's too much involved in these things that people don't think about, and they and they let these. People. There are several they, other they, brands they that respond well to gluten free. Maybe I need to put my son on gluten free. It's good for people with and, epilepsy too. And organic. Yeah, there's. Uh, yeah, there's. I mean, there's, 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 there's some benefits. You just gotta. You got like, once again. You gotta do your research. <laughs> you just gotta do your research. Mm-hmm. People, pe- people let marketing campaigns 
guide their their dollars and guide their their eating habits, which they you know they need to think about is that the marketing campaigns are not designed to make you healthy. They're designed to to get your money. That's it. That's the only mm-hmm. reason. Yeah. You know the health People industry are itself is a billion dollar yeah. industry because of the marketing. It has nothing to do with your health. They don't care about your health. They can, they can care less. People. They want everybody to stay fat. Exactly. Like, people are too trendy. So a lot of people yeah. just follow trends, and they don't Let's really, do you know, they don't really do the Keep research. Diet, yeah. So, like, when so like when things come up, when they start talking about organic, buying organic foods, like, people don't even take the time out to really study what organic is or what really, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, is this food really organic? You know, I'm just reading an article. And it was saying how, you know, you got to read the label because some food will say it's organ- organic, but if it doesn't have, like, the certified uh, FDA label with the uh, things like five digits and it start with the letter nine, then it really ain't U.S. FDA certified organic, which means even then when it says certified organic, that means it only has to have 95% of the organic properties. So it doesn't even have to, that doesn't even mean it's fully 100% organic. Wow. You got like 95%. Yeah, as long as it got 95%, then they're going to call it organic. You understand? And that's why I tell people, like, real simple thing, just look at the, look at certain foods and look at, like, how they're supposed to be or, you know what I mean, like, how they grow in the wild, like bananas, you go look at bananas, the little big bananas you see at the court, they're not real bananas. No. You know what I mean? Like, those, those those are hybrids. So you think, you know, most people think banana are, bananas are organic as fruit. I know that. Like, no. You know what I mean? We eat hybrids. We eat hybrids. Everything not. We so, so you really, even, you know, some people get it confused. Like, they'll go to the farmer's market. Mm-hmm. And they'll think just because they're at a farmer's market, the food is legit, everything is organic, and that's not true neither. You feel me? That, like, like, like Willie said, this is a money game. People out here trying to make money. So just because they're at a farmer's market doesn't mean they don't got some fruit or some vegetables that, you know what I mean, they done got from from the side somewhere that they didn't grow. Yeah. You feel me? Like, you know what I mean? I wanted to get into because we touched on it earlier, and you and you and you uh, you just mentioned it, mentioned them before. It's vegans, mm-hmm. and you know this whole vegan trend. A lot of people get it mixed up. You know, vegan really had nothing to do with uh, vegan lifestyle. Really had nothing to do with the origins of like eating healthy. Veganism is really about the. Uh, Animals being slaughtered and killed for food and eating, you know, eating dead flesh, eating, you know, what they call living beings. So, you know, people were against that because Willie, I mean, Willie brought that up. Like, in our, uh, when we was pre-gaming the show, it's like, it's almost like a religion. Mm-hmm. Like, right. they turn, into, right. turn veganism into almost like a religion. And, it, and it, quite honestly, it, it is. And they're so forceful and forceful with their message that it's almost getting, you know what I mean, radical. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's almost right. radical. They're Z lots. They're literally Z lots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, you know, and, you know, it's really, you know, I understand if they were to stick to, okay, you know, you know, everybody not going to get, like, what's the old saying? I think it's like a religion. Just because you've seen the light, yeah. don't forget at one point you was in the dark as well. You feel yeah. me? So don't just because you, right. you done came to the other side, now you're trying to look down and judge those who didn't. Sometimes everybody yeah. move at their own pace. You feel me? So you can't judge those who who don't know no better. You feel me? A lot of us right. don't know right. no better. And a lot of us, you know, and granted, a lot of us, Ignorance is bliss. You feel me? Yeah, <laughs> that's true, too. They just... we, we could touch on that. I'll hold a whole other conversation about that. 
Exactly. Facts. Exactly. Facts. So I just wanted to hear what y'all got to think on these old, on veganism or, you know, how they spread any message or what have you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I got, I got a lot of friends that are, that are either vegans or who are starting to follow a vegan, you know, diet and lifestyle. And so, you know, I kind of speak from, from, from my own truth on that one is that, you know, I know a lot of them uh, are just learning about it. You know, they, they're not crazy uh, uh, fanatical about it or anything, you know, so it's not all vegans, you know, all you vegans out there, calm down, take your pennies off, out your butt, it's, it's okay. What, what we're talking about is people who are like that, who, who really push this message like, like it's, it's, it's the gospel for them, you know what I mean? And 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 I, I love the I love the enthusiasm, love the passion, but to tone it down a notch. It's 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 a lifestyle that's that's not for everybody. And I think one thing that some people who get into it don't realize when they first get into it is how much you got to dedicate to it. You know, in terms of you know turning around not only the way you eat but the way you think about eating. You know, there's there's so many health benefits, but then there's so many things that you have to figure out alternatives to because you just can't eat, you know, uh, spinach and, and lettuce all day long. It just it, it just doesn't work. You know, you have to have other types of foods to supplement what you're losing by not eating fish, not eating chicken, not eating beef, you know, those kind of things. So you have to, you have to supplement those things with other types of vegetables, other types of uh, substances to in, ensure that your body gets the needed nutrients that it needs in order to survive. You know, we still got to eat to live. So, you know, and, and, and there's plenty of books. There's plenty of people out there who are willing to tell you how to do it, you know, and there's, there's you know, a lot of restaurants popping up now as well. But the thing is, you know, you know, it's it's that mindset. And I think some people who, who become vegans and, and who do it for a long time, they get in that mindset like, if you ain't doing it, something wrong with you. And it's like, like you said, Clint, it's like some for some of us, ignorance is bliss. You know, I, I know the effects of meat and, 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 and the effects of, of, of having a bad diet. I know what they are. I mean, I, I, I actually went through at one point in my life and lost like 110 pounds. Because I, you know, I started eating right. I started, you know, of course I backtracked and I'm, you know, back to 300 pounds. But, you know, it's like, you know, and and, and not to say that I'm I'm living in ignorance is bliss. My thing is though, it's there's there's a level of dedication you got to give to this. You know, you just can't you just can't you know say oh I'm never going to eat X Y Z again and everything's just going to be you know great. You know, no, you have to actually. You know, set set aside schedules. You gotta, you know, go get mm-hmm. buy the right foods. You have to cook every day. You have to, you know, prepare your food properly. You gotta do pre prep. You gotta do uh, uh, meal prep. You gotta do. I mean, there's 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 so much involved in this that you you have to dedicate yourself to. And I mean, and I think that's part of what happened to me is because I I work a lot. I got kids that I raise. You know, I have a lot of things going on that I do in the community. So there's so much that I had going on that, you know, living just to eat, it became a problem, you know, and because, you know, it's like one thing to eat to live. There's another thing when you live just for your next meal. Like, there's so much in work involved in that, that that's kind of how I felt. Like, I was just like every day, you know, and, and, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes that's a good thing. And you know, if you do want to have a good, healthy lifestyle, you're gonna you want to want to incorporate a lot of those strategies in, in, into your life, uh, and find a way to make it work. You know, I, I've gotten to a point where I'm trying to find the balance, right? You know, and I know that's the answer and that's the key is that you got to have a balance. You got to have a balance of being able to do what you want to do and do it how you want to do it, but you also have to have a balance of of doing what's right for your body and what's right for your life, so that that way you can have best of all the worlds, you know what I mean? So it's just a matter of just, you know, keeping focus on that. But the Z-Lots, they're going to tell you, you know, you just got to do this and you got to do that and, you know, and you can do it. And a lot of people can. It's, 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 not, it's not impossible. It's just, you know, there might be a challenge. You, you might have to rearrange your schedule a little bit. You might have to dedicate a little more time in your day. But, you know, it's one of those things that people, you know, they, they, you got to push them back a little bit because they will push it on you. Um, oh, well, one other thing that, that 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 I didn't think about too about it was that another thing about ve- vegans in that lifestyle is not only about what you eat, is what you wear and what you and what yeah. you purchase. You know, not purchasing animal products that are you know 
made from animals that were killed, you know, like jackets and pants and belts and stuff like that. You know, it's 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 a full on lifestyle, not just about the, the what you consume in your in, in you know in your mouth. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm gonna be real honest, and um, I have a couple friends that if they listen to this podcast, they might be a little mad at me. They are, some of them are newly vegan, some of them have been vegan, some of them are on a non-pork diet and stuff like that. If anybody knows Sunny, I am a meat eater. I love me some bacon, like, and it's a crazy because I don't eat pork like like I love pork, but I don't eat pork as much as I should. So I eat, you know, my ham for the holidays. I like my I like my bacon. I like my pepperonis once in the blue. Those are things that they're, they're, they're and oh, and Italian sausage. Those are not going anywhere in my life. So I remember I made a post one day that I was having migraines, and somebody said, oh, we need to stop eating meat and stop eating pork. I, I like, I was nice about it on the stands, but I, what I really wanted to say was shut the hell up. I eat what the hell I want to eat. Um, and I get it because, like, every time something's wrong with you, I have those friends that, that go on that because they are vegan or whatever. They go on and they say to me, oh, well, you should eat this. Are y'all laughing at me? You're fired. But I just feel like... I, have, I don't know I what friends, that was. I, I think that was really having a conversation in the background. But I just feel like I have friends that, like, tell me certain things. I should stop doing this. I should stop doing this. And I just want to say, just shut the fuck up. Let me eat what I want to eat. Um... Half the time I got a migraine is because I got blood pressure issues because I'm stressed the hell out. It has nothing to do with what I'm eating. I'm just under. I'm a single mother that's stressed the fuck out. This is why I'm. This is why I'm stressed. This is why I'm having these migraines. Um, it's nothing new to me. It happens when I'm really under stress. I get migraines often. So those um extreme vegans always get on my status like, oh, well, you need to eat this. You need to stop doing this. You need to do this. Your hair needs to blah 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 blah. And I'm like, just shut the hell up. I'm gonna still eat my pork. I'm gonna still eat my my chicken. And I'm going to eat what the hell I want. I mainly eat a lot of chicken. Now, that's the most meat that I eat all the time. So, like, I don't think I eat that bad. Um, so I don't need you to tell me how to eat. I'm, I'm not an unhealthy. I don't consider myself an unhealthy eater because I don't fry a lot. I bake a lot. I crock pot a lot. Maybe crock pot is not the healthiest way, but I do bake almost everything that I can. So, um I just want to tell them to shut the hell up half the time because they like they like extreme and I just like you just started being a vegan like last week, dude. Shut up. Well, I don't think the crock pot is necessarily as healthy as bacon because you're you're cooking whatever you're cooking is sitting in whatever your seasoning is, so it's, it's sitting in a salty kind of you know. So it's I don't think crock pot is healthier than actually baking it in the oven. Oh, but like I, I mean, said, I that's what... Like that, but I, I always, I, always I, consider, you know, doing the crock pot thing was probably, you know, healthier than certain other types of, especially frying, you know, of I course. Think, but, I uh, think, you know, just... I think baking is actually healthier because it's taking that excess juice and see, like if you season your food, whatever you're putting in the, in, in the um, crock pot, it's just sitting in there. Like your food is just, like if you ever make collard greens and, or something that's like high salty or like can be of high salt depending on how you cook it. If you cook it in a crock pot, it's just sitting in that in that salty stuff so it's not as healthy as either cooking it on a stove or putting it in the crock oh, pot. Yeah, that's not the crock pot yeah, the yeah, oven. No, I don't I don't yeah, I don't yeah, I was about to say I don't I don't make stuff like that in the crock pot and yeah. in, in like, high salt and nothing like that. Yeah, I just I just have like different soups and stuff that. like that that I make. Cause you know, the Thanksgiving come around, people put a lot of stuff in the crock pot. Everything that goes in the crock pot is not necessarily healthy. So you have to be like, if and a lot of people I know make soups in a crock pot. That's your, like, if you're seasoning the soups, your stuff is sitting in it. So you have to, like, <laughs> I, I, I just thing. want to say, like, is the, the, what Willie just said, you know, one thing we all got to understand, too, is we all. Like, cook differently. We all grew up differently in how food was cooked. And so, like how you say how you, like what he just said, he don't, some of the stuff you may cook in the crock pot, he may not cook in the crock pot. Yeah. You know and, and I think one thing that they lost in all this is cultural. Like, we all picked up a lot of things from different cultures 
and how they eat. And you mentioned it earlier, Sonny. Some things are good for some, and some things are not good for others. Like, I know my grandma was eating neck bones in Portland. She died at, like, 92. Another grandma died at 90. You feel me? I know some health freaks who died young, and I know some health freaks who, who, who lived a long time. You know, everything ain't for everybody. You know, our bodies react differently to different things. You know, the uh, I was just reading on, uh, I think it was Twitter, somebody made the post, well, well, a link to an article to where the lady was like, she said, she's going to go vegan. She just going to stop eating how she was eating. And she's going to go vegan for uh, 30 or 60 days, something like that, and see what results. And in that process, she ended up having to go to the doctor, and she ended up, like, getting sick. She was getting migraines and stuff mm-hmm. like that. She was getting these bad headaches and all that. And, and and the doctor told her, well, you know, you just went, you know, you didn't ease into it. You just jumped right into it. Yeah, you it. can't shock your body like that. Yeah. And, and, and right. you know, had, she had a certain deficiency and everything. So everything takes time. And like you said, Sonny, some, some people ain't ready. Some people like the way they eat. You feel me? They feel as though it's healthy. You know, you got to let them be. You got to let them live their life. You can't, you know, like I got this one dude, like I had to block on my IG, man, because he was so disrespectful in his his belief. He, he's, oh, y'all ain't shit because y'all eat meat. You know, how stupid can y'all be? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was relentless every day, relentless. Yeah, I would have been know, like, ah, right, you got to go, bro. Cause what I, nah, I mean, like, was, how does, and that's what I get with people like, what is and and like it's different like educational wise like learning shit for like it's different if it's like something that's important to like I I'm not I, maybe I'm saying this wrong it's different if it's something that is educational and I need to know, but it's like but not to the point where if what I'm doing like what I'm doing if it's not affecting you, it shouldn't. Have you revved up like like that? Like if, if I'm eating meat and you just so like I can't believe she eat meat and you having a bad day and you pissed off because I'm eating meat. Like you first of all grab your own life. Worry about yourself. Like I'm not your child. I'm a whole adult. What I choose to put in my body is not harming your body. So you go be over there and be great. Let me be over here and be and be not awake and dying. Let me be great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I, de- I definitely subscribe to that too. That you know, what I eat don't make you shit, and it definitely don't make you fat either. So you know, let me let me be me, let me do me. Uh, but like you said, I, you know, I, I appreciate the knowledge, I appreciate the education. You know, especially if it's something I don't know about. You know, like I gotta like I really gotta investigate now. Is, is this crock pot cooking cooking really good for me? I gotta I gotta check that out. But Sunny said, it's, you know, so it's like. We got we we got to take for what we want, you know. Take what we want from things, right? You know, you can't push it down our throats. You know, I can't have somebody going stop crockpotting. That's that's dumb. What's wrong with you? I'll be like, I'll be like, screw you. I'm about to go crockpot right now. You know what I'm saying? I I I just can't see somebody telling me how to live my life. And and, you know, that's what people got to understand. You can't tell everybody how to live their life. You have to give them the knowledge and let them do what they want with it. You know, it's it's up to them at that point. No, I love crock pot, and I would never take it at the crock pot. I just say a certain like, <laughs> yeah. I, no, like, like I, I one one day I made calories in the crock pot, like just because I wanted to try and see how it would come out. Those should not be made in the crock pot. You can warm them up in the crock pot, but don't make them in the crock pot. <laughs> no, because you know, it makes you, them you salty. Know, you know, it's salty. No, you, if you, you use. You, you, you put salt in your crock? Don't put any salt. No, in your no, green, no, no, no. All right, so no, no, no. So, so if we you use bacon. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no. If you, bacon, if you use bacon and um and and neck bones and stuff, right? That's that's salty. That's giving the um the the collard greens the taste because because you know they don't taste like nothing really. So if you're cooking that's it, that's your, your stuff in a crock pot and it's sitting in that neck bone and and, and like you know how you cook your neck bone fire. So it gets that salty taste to kind of give the collard greens a little bit of flavor, but if your collard greens are, I don't, I don't, even, I don't even do all that. I, well, see, I you do might none of that. I don't put no, I don't put no pork in my in my greens at all. They taste amazing. 
but it's salty. If you make neck bones and, and, and stuff and ham hocks, they're a little yeah. bit salty. So if you're putting that in the crock pot, the juice and everything, now you cook them before you put them in the collard greens, and you, like, mess, mm-hmm. get the collard greens to cook in, in that season to get them a flavor. So if you put all that juice from, from making the, the, the neck bones and, um, and ham hocks, and you put them in a the crock pot, and you put your collard greens in a crock pot, if you cook them slow, cook them, they're going to be salty. Like, because I, I tried right. to see how they would taste. So if they're sitting in that salty juice for hours cooking, you got some salty-ass collard greens. So that's not right, something yeah. you would cook. That's why you don't. Yeah, that's why you don't. Yeah, that's why you don't. Yeah, that's why you yeah, don't put that in. If you, if you, if if you want to cook, if you want to cook greens in the crock pot, you have you have to only put garlic, some some a few other little seasonings. I'll send you a recipe, honey. But basically, no, there's no, some there's some really no, good, like good. No, no, just, just, I know, but just listen, listen, listen. Just just, just I just I just wanna I just I just wanna say that, you know, it, it's possible. You just there's some there's some better recipes. You don't you do, but you don't use any you don't use any uh 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 fat, you know, anything like uh, or pork fat in it. It's 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 that's not gonna work for me because it's not pork fat. So, <laughs> yeah. That's not gonna work for me. Like, but, like but I, I wanna get into I wanna get some to, before before we end the show, uh we got like fifteen more minutes. Um, is is going back to the, the, the statement about is our food killing us. Um, so one other thing that I had thought about and we were talking about uh, uh, the food killing us is just foodborne illnesses. So, you know, we see this a lot in, in uh, uh, people talking about it online, you know, especially social media, you know, oh, don't go eat here, you're going to get sick. Don't eat there, you're going to get sick, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, that's one of the biggest things is, you know, and we see about the E. coli, the salmonella poisoning, things like that. Uh, so, you know, talking about is our food killing us, like is it really killing us in terms of, you know, where we're getting our food, you know. So I wanted to kind of touch on that as well, uh, you know, kind of throw out some 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 discussion on that, you know, what's y'all thoughts on, on, on how how to avoid getting sick while you while you're out eating or why or when you're buying certain certain things. I mean I think we touched touched on it with the meat. Wash your meat. Definitely wash your meat. Wash your hands. Definitely wash your hands. <laughs> what yes. else y'all want to put out there for that? Wash everything. Wash the wash the vegetables. Watch wash your fruit. Like wash it all. Don't just be Chopping shit up and cooking it and then giving it to other people. You getting other people sick. That's why people got they stomach all messed up with food poisoning because y'all motherfuckers ain't washing y'all shit. Wash it, clean it, right? And cook it properly and, and know when you got bad food and just don't cook it. Throw that shit away. Save it. Save people from getting sick. Yeah, that's true. That yeah, that's that's one thing I think is people forget is is, is check them dates. You know, check check how long yeah. you had something. You know, if you got meat. Yeah, I get mad longer than a week. That, it's got to go in the trash. If the milk say September 20th, it's in the garbage on September 20th. I'm just saying. <laughs> and sometimes I, don't know, I, 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 they just, I make it a couple more days. <laughs> yeah, that's the only place to pay attention. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> you don't just you can't just wash your food. You just you gotta let it soak. You know, yeah, that's the best I was eating. The best way to do it is let it soak for a minute or two in cold water. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Not hot water. Cold water, let it soak for a little why, bit. Tell them why. Why? Why? Not in the in the in the, um, in the hot water. Not in, why? Why not hot water? Right, yeah. Exactly. Well, from what I've learned, hot hot water, you know, it it, it has the uh the little germs in it. Exactly. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now I mean, hot water has the germs in it, so it really doesn't. You feel me? It really isn't conducive. You prefer cold water. That's why, you know, the the old wives tell of, you know, boiling water. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what I mean? It really doesn't do nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you but, boil the water. But just like, like, I think what, what, what people what people get mixed up is you, you, use, you use hot water on your body, clean your body, yeah. use hot water and all that kind of stuff, clean your clothes. But when it comes to your mm-hmm. food, especially meat, especially meat, you don't put you don't yeah, put it in hot water because you don't soak it in hot water. You don't you don't wash it in hot water because you don't want it to it, it's, it'll it'll start to to to, to generate those germs and, and, and those mm-hmm. organisms. You know that warm that's what that's what those organisms live is in warm places. Yeah, in that and warm that water. Meat, yeah. You know you know if it's if it's not if it's not at cooking temperature and you haven't reached the cooking temp or the the proper temperature for the meat at 
uh, in that in that hot you know boiling water, if it hasn't reached the proper temperature, those organisms are still going to be in there until you reach the proper temperature. So you know you got I think it's 160 degrees for for red meat. Um, I can't remember how much it is for white for uh, for poultry and stuff like that. But basically, there's temperatures that you have to get that meat up to before those those germs are killed. So putting yeah. stuff in lukewarm water or water warm water out of the sink and letting it sit in that warm water, you, you're creating more germs than no you're killing. You know, and, and and so the cold water, it's just gonna it's it's gonna kind of like like kind of like it's like stasis. You know, it kind of like puts it, you know, and, and it keeps the meat from, from, from generating additional organisms. It and neutralizes it. on there is going to be on there until you rinse it off, and then you put it and you cook it, and you cook it properly, cook it to the correct temperature. Right, neutralizes. That's the one I'm looking for. Thank you, Sunny. Yeah. It neutralizes those, those, those organisms. It keeps it from generating more. So you want it to, to, to you, want to, you know, reduce. That's why you freeze meat. Of, of creating That's additional, why you freeze additional uh Exactly. exactly. And don't and oh my God, this is one thing. Don't don't thaw me. Please don't say unthaw people. Don't thaw me and then refreeze it. Please don't. That's just No, yeah. you, once you once <laughs> you, you unthaw it, if, once you unthaw it, like say if you take it out, like I'm I'm a big person that they didn't just said it. Exactly what I just said it. Thaw well, it. No. <laughs> no, un thaw, shut up. No. We only thaw. <laughs> Yeah, shut up. But, but you basically take it out the night before and cook it that next day. You can't just keep leaving. Like, don't take out meat and leave it out and, and like, like you know, and put it in the refrigerator for, for two, three, two or three days and tell them, oh, I'm going to cook that. No. It ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't, it ain't good. This is how you know who know how to cook. You got to watch how people cook their food. Like, you take some chicken out on Tuesday and you don't cook it till Saturday. I'm not eating that chicken. It's still good. No, it's not. But it's just good for you, but it's not good for me. I'm not about to eat it. Thank you so much. I, I will go get me a burger. Thing. Let me tell you somebody who's been a cook. Who's been a cook? Where well, a lot of y'all don't realize. A lot of food that y'all think, especially those who work. Like, I was a cook for a building called Justice Complex. So, when mm-hmm. I cook in the kitchen, you know, it's like nine floors. You feel me? It's where they hold. It was a whole lot of people. It's probably more than nine floors. A whole lot of people in the building. So, you you mass cooking food. Well, people don't realize a lot of the food after it's cooked and if it's still a lot left over, all that food isn't thrown away. A lot of it is frozen, especially for, soup, for next next time, yeah. And all that once it cooked and it's not, <coughs> you know, we'll we'll throw that thing in the freezer. You feel me? And bring it out at a later date. You know, and then once it, like you say, once it thaw out and we reheat it up and make it suitable to eat again, then we'll throw it away. So sometimes, most people don't even know that. Most people don't even know mm-hmm. that. So when y'all go into these restaurants, when y'all go into these restaurants, uh, a lot of this food is not only Wait. frozen, some of it is, is, is pre-cooked before it even gets yeah. it. Yeah, you know, I got it. I mean, people, people yeah. got to get that out their mind to think that you're going to walk into a restaurant and eat something fresh in 10 minutes. It's, it, don't, it don't work that way. Yeah. Most of the food mm-hmm. is so elaborately set up. That's it like, takes them that's 10 like minutes my job. to dress it up. That's like, yeah. like my job. They'll have, they'll, have, they'll have beef stew one day, and then they'll have veg- vegetable soup with, with beef in it. Like, it's the same thing from yesterday. They just added vegetables. Like, that's all they did. <laughs> yeah. We, like, remember peas from yesterday put them in there? Did that we did that plenty of times where we we repurpose food. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. Like we like we'll probably have a uh probably made some roast beef or or something and it all the roast beef didn't cook. All right, well guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna chop this roast beef up <laughs> and make something yep. else out of it. Make a whole different meal. You know what yeah. I mean? We're gonna shred it and turn it to something different. You feel me? A lot of times people don't know the difference. Even with eggs. Like, when y'all go to get breakfast, <clears throat> unless y'all watch them, sometimes they're not even eggs that you crack. You know, we used to make, they made us get the egg out the box. You understand? Mm-hmm. That's already cracked. Now, so Thank we, God for the Department of Labor we, and um, Clint's Uncle Jamal because he cracked eggs right in front of me. Let me get my yeah, two Fridays. Thank you so much. Every, every, that's because he's cooking on the grill. You know, like, y'all, sometimes y'all don't know what's going on in that back. 
Yeah, because you, know so you get them, you get them pre scrambled eggs that, like, the, you know, like the, yeah. the normal breakfast is scrambled eggs. And the, yeah, I don't I don't live by that. If it didn't come it, in, and, and they know that, if it didn't come out the fryer when I see it, I ain't getting it. Unless, they unless it's vegan. Have us. They used to have us. We'd get a big old bucket. I know we ain't got that much time left. We used to get a big old bucket, right? Like a big old white bucket or whatever. <clears throat> Put a big old strainer in it. Get the whole thing. It is it's a box of uh, eggs. It come like hundred something eggs in a box. You just crack it, up. boom, and it's running through the st- st- uh, strainer. And then you squeeze in lemon juice, the r- fresh lemon. You cut the lemon, and you squeeze in the lemon in it, cause that cause it'll last longer. The lemon, yeah, keep it fresh. But mind you, you just dump it in the bucket. We'll have to do this every night before we leave. Then you put the lemon. So by the time next it, morning, you just wrap take it a up. Eight. Yep, we just dumping it in. Now most people, if they knew that's how the eggs was being made, <laughs> you know, because I mean? guess what, it ain't like yeah, it ain't like that bucket. You toss that bucket after you cleaning that bucket. You yeah. feel me? And that bucket itself probably had some other stuff in it before we even repurposed it for the eggs. Yeah. This is why you, this is why, like, and it's funny because when I order food, I'm so, like, I will, like, even, like, even certain things I get, it has, it has to be made by, it's always made in front of me. Because you just, like, if you, like I said, if you didn't, if you didn't cook anything, and sometimes if you know how things are cooked, you just be mindful of what the fuck they can make. I'm like, uh-uh, I need two fried eggs right there on the grill. Let me get some toast. That's very easy. All right, thank you. I'm out. <laughs> very, very quick. Yeah, because right. you never great. know. That's great. One, one, one thing I wanted to put out there though, I had read about was um, was about uh, you know how how often people get sick. Cause a lot of people, it was well, at least I, I was I was kind of seeing this myself. I don't know if y'all were seeing it. I know Clint hasn't been on Facebook in a long time, um, and, but I've been seeing or I have been seeing uh, up until or about few months ago, a lot of people talking about, you know, getting sick and, you know, especially when it was a lot of those um, uh, salmonella breakouts and that kind of thing. Um, you know, some people was just like, felt like it was just so bad. Like, you know, there was so much sickness going around from food, you know, at least that's how it seemed like it was being promoted. And so I was kind of, you know, doing a little bit of uh, research trying to understand, you know, how often people get sick from food. And, you know, when you hear the numbers, it sounds like a lot, you know. So I was I was looking at it, it was saying, you know, uh, how there's like 48 million, uh, estimated 48 million illnesses from foodborne pathogens, right? And like how 100 and almost 128,000 people get hospitalized from them. So, you know, I mean, you just think about those, those are some huge numbers. But then this, <laughs> this article I read kind of put it in perspective. And they were saying how, you know, just in America alone, just the United States, not even America, just in the United States, there's, you know, what, 300 and I think it's 308 or 310 million people, according to the census. There's, most people eat about two meals a day. So they were saying that's roughly like 225 billion meals being eaten, you know, by uh, in a year com- compared to the 48 million illnesses. So it's like less than like two hundredths of a percent of people get sick or our meals make people sick. So it's like percentage wise you realize it's not that often that it's happening. It's just it's a lot when you think about it, you know, like the and, and like the small picture and you're like, oh my God, it's forty eight million people or forty eight million meals a year have people stomach turned upside down, you know, and hundred thirty thousand people, you know, it's, it's it sounds like a lot, but it's not as often as people make it out to be as you know i mean yeah it's more than five or six per day and across a year but it's it's still you know i mean you got to think it's millions and millions and millions and hundreds of millions of people it is in this country if you do your due diligence you can avoid getting sick you can avoid i mean some things you just can't avoid you know like the situation that happened uh i think about six months ago with the lettuce and how the lettuce was all contaminated especially in i think it was new mexico and a couple other states and um, and I think recently, even more recently, there was an issue with uh, either spinach or I don't know if y'all remember this. It was like spinach or something. Not and, spinach. Uh, I love and, spinach. And it was, well, it, it no, was, we got it like was a, a minute and, and a half left. Oh, all right. You know, we probably should wrap it up. But yeah, so you know, <laughs> just keep that in mind, people. Wash your hands. Wash your food. You'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Wrap it up. Sorry, info. 
<laughs> Quickly. Oh, y'all know what it is. Y'all can hit hit me up on uh, my blog, akingstruth dot com, and hit me up on Twitter at e trend group. All right, this your boy Willie Styles. Get at me at Willie Styles everywhere, and Willie Styles dot info for all my links. Stylesradio dot com for my video blog. And of course, I am Sunny underscore D. Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. My blog, unreservedlyme. dot com. Check out our website, GFT Radio. Find us on iCloud, Sound, um, um, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, YouTube, Blog Talk Radio, Alexa, GFT Radio. You'll find us. Teespring. dot com forward slash stores, GFT for um slash GFT Radio. Get y'all merchandise. Thank you guys for listening tonight. See you on seven days. Hello.